Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over the infinite banking concept, some things that you need to do before you start the concept, before you engage in it, before you buy any product. And we're gonna talk about policy design so that we acquire the correct product so that we can implement the infinite banking concept correctly. So let's direct our attention to the board. So I think this video is gonna help everybody out that currently does not have a infinite banking policy put in place yet and you're at that beginning stage, um, whether you're still in debt or close to being debt free and you feel personally based on your four major numbers, income expense, debt, cash flow, the debt tools that you've acquired and the existing capital or assets that you have on hand to maximize funding on, in terms of the policy itself uh, and then the continuation of you actually being able to you know fund this new asset class that you're going to be you know adding to your whole wealth creation plan so the first thing i want to dive into is the things that you need to do first I think this is super critical so that you do not get fooled or tricked or deceived or misguided. Genuinely being misguided happens all the time in the financial space. And it's not necessarily the agent's fault or the financial advisor or the coach or the financial consultant. Whatever information they have, you're now receiving it secondhand and it's up to you to verify that information whether it's correct incorrect or the information could be correct but is it effective in the economy that you live in today right is what they're saying effective right because even though in the financial space you can present facts Okay, if you do this, you know, you'll make money. If you do this, you'll save more money. If you do that, you'll get out of debt faster. That could all be very true. Is there another concept that can beat that concept? If so, how much better is that other concept? Um, how risky is it? How effective? Um, does it make more sense in the long run? And then you want to run it through your financial processor, right? Your mindset. You want to run it through your perspective, your philosophy in terms of your lifestyle, how you live, how disciplined you are with money, how you manage money, how you produce and make the money. And that'll help you verify even further whether that concept is right for you or not. Okay. So what do you need to do? In terms of looking at the infinite banking concept you need to study and research the best way to study and research this concept is through blogs youtube uh, maybe instagram there's some content on facebook but primarily i think you're going to find most of your information valid verifiable information on youtube um, blogs and articles and then um, researching the actual product itself. So infinite banking is referring to whole life insurance. It can also refer to index universal life, variable life, adjustable life. Um, there's many other terms to it. But if you were to wrap it up into one terminology to describe infinite banking, we're talking about permanent life insurance. Okay, which is a type of policy that you would pay into typically your whole life if you designed it the traditional way. We're not doing anything here traditional. This is very different, unique, it's complex, it's difficult, there's a lot of information. So that's why you need to do a whole lot of studying and research. The second thing is you need to find an agent. The only person that can sell you an infinite banking policy is the agent. 
you cannot go directly to the company. If you go to the company, they're going to direct you to an agent to help you out or a brokerage or an agency and you'll get into contact with a live person, an agent that can sell you what you're looking for. Now, if you were to go directly to an insurance company and tell them you want an infinite banking policy designed this way, da 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 they're not going to know what you're talking about. Very similar to when you walk into a bank and you ask them, okay, I wanna do velocity banking, I wanna pay off all my debt extremely fast, I need to get this line of credit at this interest rate preferably, I'd like this amount of credit limit preferably, can you help me? They're gonna look at you with three heads. The loan officers, the staff members, they are not taught velocity banking. The, the, um, the staff at these big mutual life insurance companies are not taught infinite banking. The only people that understand it are the agents. The agent. These are the agents is like a freelancer, but also a representative of that major company. And they simply market products to bring business to that right company. And the agent receives a commission. Right? But that agent is free to design policies however they want according to the client's desires right so that's going to be really important finding that right agent how do you find the right agent it's very tough in my opinion I, uh, you know it took me a while I, I went through about maybe four or five individuals before I found the right person and that took about a six to nine month period of actual research and studying to try and have an intellectual conversation with that agent so that I know what I'm asking for and, I, and, and I'm going to trust that they're going to produce what I'm asking for. And then the next step is really trying to build a relationship with that person. Very similar to when we're doing velocity banking, trying to build a relationship with banks, with the loan officers, the staff members. Very similar. You want to find someone you can trust that can genuinely help you um, accelerate the velocity banking concept so you can get completely out of debt extremely fast. Um, so when we're looking at an agent, you want to try and qualify them, see if they're producing content, see if they're genuinely helping people out there. You know, maybe do they have a website or do they work for an agency? Uh, what's their goal in life? Um, do they plan on being an agent for the rest of their lives? Or is it just a stepping stone? Is it just like a, a side thing? Is it their passion? I think these are critical questions to ask because when you do open up a permanent life insurance policy, whether it's a whole life, IUL, however it's designed, whether traditionally or untraditionally, you're gonna have that agent for life. So it would be nice if that agent is that's their career that's their passion that's their desire they love to do this so if you can find an agent that really loves what they do i think that's going to help quite a bit okay and then the other thing is are they going to teach you are they going to take the time to try and help you along the way to kind of really grasp the concept for what it is to the point where they're cool whether you work with them or not like they keep their cool they don't start pushing the product too hard now if you're a 10x type of person there's no such thing as pushing too hard on a client in terms of sales in terms of being an effective communicator you're being straight up with them from the very beginning you're saying hey listen at the end of this phone call i want you to be my client let's just settle that right there that's not being pushy at all. That's being very truthful and honest, saying, hey, I want you to be my client. I'm going to sell you a product and I'm expecting you to pay for that product so that I can increase my life so that I can have the money to either take care of my family, take care of myself, help others, teach others, help others grow. When you are upfront like that, I think that really just settles the playing field for the person so they understand, okay, I'm either going to sit in this phone call for the next hour or hour and a half or 45 minutes, however long the phone call is, 
knowing in the back of my mind they're going to close me. And I can make a decision at the beginning of that call whether I'm going to be closed or not closed. And so when you present that, I think that helps a lot if you get an agent on that level, right? Rather than uh, someone that tries to just use terminology, trick you, sleight of hand, you know, fluff up the concept more than what it is, and then you end up falling into, right? You end up getting sold, right, into a product that you may regret 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road. And those are the worst experiences to have, especially with permanent life insurance, right? And I think this works the same way with any industry, you know, a financial advisor, a doctor, a lawyer, a CPA, whatever it is, right? So find the right agent, take your time, don't rush this, this is your money. Do not rush into things, right? You know, you, you listen to a video, it's talking about, oh, do this with your money, and but uh, hey, maybe watch 15 videos on what they're saying and maybe watch it from three other people and see if it, you know, is, is coherent, you know, or, or, um, or if there's some differences, maybe you can poke some holes into the concept, see where it can fail, where it can uh, have success, and then you evaluate, okay? And the next thing that I want you to do is give the concept purpose, okay? Know exactly what you want to do with the infinite banking concept. For example, me personally, I'm funding two policies through my cash flow, velocity banking, and that such. I then use these policies as a place to park my saved money. So out of my total income, I'm saving 40% of what my make. I save 40% of what I make and I park it in tax-free life insurance, infinite banking. That's one purpose. The second purpose is to build a tax-free asset that will compound forever. It'll be a hedge against inflation, a hedge against cost of goods rising, and it's also going to be used for me to pay my taxes from year to year, right? So I'm literally going to use my policies to pay my taxes from my business year to year. So the same money that I would give to the IRS, instead of taking my cash that I saved in a savings account, earning nothing or very little, just to be extracted and paid to the IRS. Instead of doing that, I'm, si I'm simply shifting that savings account into high cash value life insurance. And I have the money sit there for the entire year, growing at four to six percent tax free. And then when I'm ready to make that payment to the IRS, I then borrow from my high cash value life insurance policy and I pay the IRS in full. It was the same money I was gonna spend anyways all I did was store that money in my own asset. So now I'm borrowing from me rather than a savings account that's earning less than 1% on average in terms of an interest rate. Okay, so very interesting, right? So I've got multiple purposes for the use of the infinite banking concept. And then as I continue to learn, as I continue to grow, and reach more people and help more people, I'll create other unique things, such as becoming a lender. I think that'd be a very, very interesting market to get into. Literally giving money, charging interest, there's no work, right? I can charge as little as 3%, 4%. I can charge super cheap because it doesn't matter what I borrow out because this money will never lose its value once it's passed through into cash value. It's going to grow forever. I never lose the value of my money. It'll continue to appreciate rather than depreciate. Okay. So you need to study, find the agent, give the concept purpose. Now, let's say you've been doing that. Let's say you've been watching a ton of videos. You've watched my videos. You've watched 
uh, other infinite bankers out there, YouTubers talking about the infinite banking concept, become your own banker, family, bank, many different terms, it's all the same. If you hear infinite banking, very similar to what other people um, call it. The only reason why they give it different names is for the sole purpose of marketing, right? Marketing, very simple. So the next thing is policy design, right? And these are some critical questions that are gonna help your agent create something just for you. So understand that how you talk to the agent is how they're gonna pretty much design the policy. So you really do wanna be, to a degree, educated on the concept. You don't wanna go in blind and just have the agent do everything um, because they may not provide the best product for you. So it's best that you study and really, really understand the concept and be able to answer or provide these figures to the agent. They go do it and they come back with some information. So the first question you wanna ask yourself is how much money do I wanna put into this policy, this infinite banking policy and it's gonna do all this stuff. How much money do I wanna put in there per year? Figure that out first, okay? Second question, how long would you like to fund the policy for at the desired amount? that you chose. So if you're trying to put in 20,000 a year into a policy, think about how long. The reason why you wanna know how long is you can, this way you can get to that ultimate number, that, that dream number of, of, a, of an amount of money that you want to save up over the period of a, over a period of time, okay? So how long, how much? Third question, how flexible would you like your policy to be, okay? Flexibility is talking really primarily on the actual design of the policy itself. Meaning, if I wanna put in 20,000 a year into a policy, right? So let's just say you told your agent, okay, Denzel, I wanna put in 20,000 a year, right? So let's say I'm your, I'm your agent, right? You want to put in 20000 a year. Great. And we're going to design it a 1090 split. Okay. So that means 10% of 20000 is go is going to go towards my cost of insurance. All right. Let's say in the beginning, starting out, you want to be able to put in 20, but you only have 10K to start. Right. So you've got 10K to start today and then six months from now you'll be able to put in the other 10k all right now if you're working with someone like myself regarding the infinite banking concept i only work with two life insurance companies at this point in time and that is mass mutual and guardian me personally I have a policy on both. So I feel very comfortable selling these companies, promoting them, right? Because I see the immense amount of value, flexibility, design, dividend performance. Everything met my criteria as a customer and now they meet every criteria as an agent for me to teach to my clients and share with them as well. So Mass Mutual and Guardian. Now, coming back to this, if I want to put in 20, but I only have 10K to start, six, from, six months from now, I want to be able to put in another 10, Guardian might be the better fit. Guardian allows the flexibility for someone to put in up to their desired amount that they originally chose. And then, if, you know, hopefully, you know, the mech and everything is designed properly. Um, you'll be able to add money at leisure without any medical underwriting, right? No uh, uh, medical checks or you don't have to do any blood work in each year, right? So Guardian might be more effective for that. 
Now, if you're someone that has the 20K up front, easily, every single year, like clockwork, you're always going to have that 20K. Like, things have to go bad for you to not have 20K sitting around at any given time. So you're, let's just say that's you. You're storing 20K each and every year. Mass Mutual might be the better fit. Mass Mutual is great for people who are very, very disciplined with their money. They know exactly how much money they're going to have each and every month over the course of each and every year. And so Mass Mutual is going to be the better fit for them. Guardian is great for people with fluctuating incomes. They don't know what's going on with their finances. They like, they're like maybe a serial entrepreneur. They like to try new things, test things out. Guardian has more flexibility than Mass Mutual. So that's just a main point. Guardian has more flexibility than Mass Mutual currently, unless Mass Mutual changes things in the next, I don't know, year or so. We're currently in March 2020. So how much money per year? How long? How flexible? What would you like your MEC limit to be? Your MEC limit stands for Modified Endowment Contract. It is a seven pay test that the IRS uses to regulate life insurance to make sure that the customer, you, the insured, is in fact purchasing life insurance and not trying to take advantage of the IRS because the IRS have labeled life insurance as a tax-free asset, right? When the death benefit gets paid out, there's no taxes to be paid on that benefit that would go to the family. So, so they want to make sure that you're doing the right thing, that you're not taking advantage of the system. Very important. So every seven years, the MEC limit, whatever that number is, will drop every seven years. So if I'm putting in 20000 into a policy let's say my mech is twenty two thousand that is very very close to my desired amount the reason why someone would do that is simply because they're trying to really really maximize on the 20. they're like denzel i want to put 20 nothing more nothing less i'm just 20. so if that's someone like you you're going to want to keep your MEC limit very, very close to the amount of money that you're putting in so that you can truly maximize on the difference between the 2000 which went towards cost of insurance, that difference between 2 k and 20 k More of that money is going to work for you. There's going to be less of a drag in terms of because um, the higher you set the MEC, the more life insurance the more life insurance you'll need to compensate for the amount of money that you'll be putting into that policy year after year, okay? So desired MEC amount, what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be really high so that you can have the ability to maybe put in double? So maybe you're like, okay, I wanna start with 20, but I want the ability to put in 40 in any given year. If that's the sense, then we have to increase that MEC to maybe 45. And then this premium would have to go up as well to be able to compensate for that. Another thing, split. What is the split? The split is referring to the difference between what goes towards cash and what goes towards premium. If you want to maximize the performance of your cash value, which is the initial intention for the infinite banking concept, then you're most likely always going to want to go with a 1090 split, okay? Where 10% goes towards the cost of life insurance, the other 90% gets drived into PUAs, paid up additions, aka cash value, aka money I can use now, today, year one, day one of funding the policy, right? There are other splits that you will hear other infinite bankers use. A common one is 60-40, where they have 40% of, say, 20 grand, 
going towards premium and the other 60% going towards cash. Some people do it this way either to create more space for the person to dump more money in for a longer period of time. Another reason why they would do a split like this based on what I've heard is they make the argument that they can possibly produce more cash value over the long run than a 1090 split. I have yet to see that come true. I have yet to see that come true. So in my book, as of right now, 1090 seems like the most financial sense if I wanna maximize on cash almost every single time. The only reason why I would go over to this type of design or maybe a 75-25 split is going back to that example before. Let's say the person has 20K, but they want the ability to dump in 40,000 in any given year. Well, if they want that ability to dump in 40,000 in any given year, the premium has to be at least 40K. So if I started with 20,000, then the split wouldn't be 90-10. It wouldn't be a 10-90 split, right? So whatever the, it would be like a 80-20, right? 4,000 of my 20 went towards premium, the other 16K went towards cash. If I kept it that way, then it's an 80-20 split. If I never reached the 40K, then then this would have been an ineffective design for that client because they couldn't actually put in that amount, that much money. They, they never really amounted to it. They never really thought they had the money for it and they just wanted that ability. And now here they are paying an extra $2,000 per year on premium when we could have easily avoided it by simply designing a 1090 split to say, hey, okay, if you wanted to put in 20,000, each and every year, and you want the ability to dump in 40, why not consider extending the funding period, the length? Because the only reason why you want to add more is because you want to get more money in there so you can have it work for you at a longer period of time. But if it's gonna cost you too much premium in the beginning years, and you may or may not ever actually reach that number, maybe we can be a little more practical to say, okay, maybe I wanna put in 20K for 25 years as opposed to maybe 15 years. And you would get in the same amount as that 40K, but it just took longer. And all we had to do was maybe increase the mech to maybe 25K, right? And understand that difference between your mech limit and what you put in, you don't lose that space, by the way. That, that mech continues to compound from year to year. And you'll be able to do what's called a makeup contribution if the insurance company allows it. They may or may not allow it because their rule is 10x the base, but there are chances, there are times where they will actually allow it, but we don't actually promote that. The reason why we say you don't lose the mech space say it's 25K, you're putting in 20, or it's 22K and you're putting in 20, that 2,000 mech space is rolling over year after year. So year one, you got 2K of uh, $2,000 of mech space if you put in 20. Year two, you put in 20 again, you've got 4K of mech space. Year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, two times seven is $14,000 of rollover mech space. Remember how I said every seven years, the mech limit adjusts down? Let's say the number dropped to 21,000. It dropped a thousand bucks. So for the next seven years, you can continue to put in 20K, right? And so now you have 14K of rollover mech space in the first seven years. The second seven years, the second set of seven years, you'll have 1,000 times seven more years. So 7K plus 14K is 21,000 of rollover mech space in year 14. Let's say, let's say year 14, mech limit drops to 20, right? Or let's say it drops to 19,000. 
Now, here's where that mech space comes in handy. Even though your mech is 19,000, right? Let's say it dropped to 19,000 in year 14, right? Beginning of 15. You'll still be able to fund 20,000 for the next seven years because you have 21,000 of mech space built up. So the difference between 19 and 20 is only a thousand bucks. So for the next seven years, only a thousand bucks, seven, you'll come back down to 14. And now we're in year 21, mech limit adjust down again, you still have this 14K of space. If it dropped down to 18K, right now there's a 2K difference, two times seven, boom, you use up all of your mech. Now you're in year 28. So you've allowed the ability to fund this policy for 28 years at 20K, which got you to probably your desired amount. Maybe there was only one or two years you wanted to actually get in 4K. And now you've just truly maximized on your mech, your desired amount of funding, the period, and the flexibility based on the company that you picked, right? And this is just um, general information just for the agent to have. They're going to need your date of birth, your first and last name. So you at any point in time, if you are someone that you are at a point where either you're debt free, you have high cash flow or very little debt, right? Let's say Let's say you've been doing velocity banking, paid off all your cars, paid off all your credit cards, paid off all your student loans, personal loans. The only thing you have left, say, is your mortgage. And you have like 50% of that paid off. Depending on your cash flow amount, the amount of money that you make per month, we could look at establishing an infinite banking policy. It might make sense. We want to run the numbers. Does it make sense? If it does not make sense, we just keep doing velocity banking, wipe out that debt really, really fast, come back to infinite banking later. Or we create a smaller policy on someone in your family. Could be yourself. You can start out with yourself. You're like, all right, you know, I just want to um, start somewhere. I want to start with something. Don't want to miss out. I'm getting older, so I want to maximize on my age and health now. Cool. That might warrant, that might, uh, we could might do some that, something like a 80-20 split, right? Or a 75-25. Might make sense. I still might just stick to the 1090 and, you know, we just do whatever it is, we, whatever money we have to start with, we roll with that. And then... When you're debt free and now you're easily max funding the policy each and every year, well, maybe we can look at insuring wife, right? Let's say it's you, your husband, you were the one that first started out. You started a policy, great. It's it's a 1090 split, it's effective. You're now max funding it. Maybe the first couple of years you didn't get in the full amount. So you're doing your makeup contributions. Let's say you're now you're completely debt free. You're doing your cash flow positive. Everything's working good and you're easily able to fund your own policy and you have leftover cash and capital, maybe we could look at starting a new policy on wife. And then after wife, we do the children. After the children, we do the grandchildren, maybe siblings, brothers, sisters, anyone in the immediate family. And you start to really start building that kingdom, that big, beautiful kingdom that you love, okay? So that's gonna be very, very, uh, effective. So coming back to the board here, date of birth, first, last name. So let's say I'm your agent. I'm the person you chose. I'm the right agent for you. Did your studying and research. You've watched my videos. You've watched videos on IBC Global, which is another great channel that talks about the infant banking concept, IBC Global. You understand the concept relatively well enough to have an intellectual conversation with me. 
Um, you're going to give the concept purpose. You know exactly what you want to do with the policy. Maybe you want to invest in real estate, start your own business, um, sell the product yourself. Maybe you want to become an agent. IBC Global can help you with that. Just let them know I sent you. Okay? And you can send me an email. Denzel at BuilderToContributor.com. You can give me your date of birth, first name, last name, the desired split, what you want to do. I usually always almost recommend 1090. What's the desired MEC limit? How much per year? How much money do you have right now to put in per year into your policy? For how long? How flexible? If you decided, just like me, that Mass Mutual and Guardian are going to be the best policies, You've looked at other policy designs. You've looked at other agents. You know, I had, I've had some very interesting conversations with a lot of existing clients, new clients, and people who are not clients at all that had a conversation with an agent that knew the concept very well. Um, they were very knowledgeable. They've been in the business for as many years as I've been alive, 24 years, let's just say, and they've been doing infinite banking for the longest and they're successful, they have a whole team, a whole everything. But what killed it is their attitude, maybe, their behavior, their ethical approach on how they teach the infinite banking concept. They were too salesy. I can't tell you how many people have come to me from other people that were just straight up rude or just really, really salesy. They weren't honest. They were just evading questions and making comparisons and just saying, this is the only way. And, you know, this is the way. It's a Mandalorian reference. This is the way, right? And they're just, you know, just, you just got the bad vibe, right? That person, I'm not gonna lie. If that person's been in business for 20 plus years, I'm sure they know things I don't know yet. But just because of their ethical behavior, those people came to me and they got a policy through me. Now, can I make a mistake? Sure. I know I've made mistakes before in the past. Sure. Um, have I made mistakes in my videos? I'm sure of it. I'm not perfect, but I care. I'm passionate. I love what I do. I'm focused. I'm disciplined. I don't fail. If I do fail, I fail forward, not backwards. And I'm committed to each and every one of the persons that come through my kingdom. Okay? I am a king. I serve my people. I serve the king of kings. That's my ethical approach on how I handle finances from a kingdom's mind. Okay? From a king's mindset. All right? And if you like that energy, then come on down. Let's hang out. Let's have a conversation. Let's make it happen. Okay, so just to wrap things up, got to know your four major numbers, debt tools, capital assets, right? Existing capital or assets that you have on hand. What are you willing to, you know, use to fund the policy with? Are you going to try and do velocity banking to fund your policy or it's just going to be straight up cash dump ins? Get these questions answered like you. I want you to actually write these, you know, in an email and you can send it to me. And then I can send you back uh, policy designs. Um, what, you know, this is what I need you to do first, right? Trust me, I'm going to know whether you're serious or not about infinite banking. I'm going to know whether or not you're wasting my time or not. So please be respectful. I have tons of people that send me emails and questions every single day every single day the same most of the same questions come in every single day and i do my very best to answer everyone in a timely manner if i don't answer them i most likely have a video where i already answered them and so if they're committed they're going to keep watching my channel and they're eventually going to come across their question and then they'll either sign up for some coaching, for some financial coaching, financial consulting, whatever the case may be, and eventually graduate into infinite banking and, and other things. So I am going to know whether you are ready or not. You know, I prefer to you be very detailed in the things that you want. And the other advantage of working with me is I have an entire team that understands the infinite banking concept better than me. Okay. 
So if you think I know the infinite banking concept, just wait till you hang out with the people at IBC Global. Steve Parisi, Phil, um, Brandon. Uh, these guys are good. They really know the concept. They like the concept. They're in-house agents. This is their thing, right? Steve Parisi is the main guy, right? The head, the head guy is the owner. So if you get access to him, wonderful. You've got the head honcho, okay? You've got the main guy. Um, so yeah, the, I, I hope that's very helpful to you. And just to kind of wrap up with an example of a properly designed infinite banking policy, as I'm just going to show you my own. So I'm putting in seventy thousand a year. My premium is seven k. This is with Guardian, right? I did say I have two, so I have another one, Mass Mutual. But just going to show you Guardian for right now. Putting in seventy k a year. Premium is seven is seven thousand, so it's a ten ninety split. My MEC limit is eighty one thousand dollars. What that simply means is I have the ability to fund seventy thousand for pretty much the lifespan of my life right so i can pretty much put in 70k for most likely the next 30 40 years with no issue right this mech limit is going to drop right every seven years so by the time it hits seventy thousand, i would have accumulated so much mech space right so once my mech limit matches what I'm putting in, that's when I start feeding into my compounded mech space for those additional years afterwards. So it'll be a good, uh, I want to say, four or five sets of seven years before it actually hits 70. So you can imagine, look, in the first seven years, 11,000 times 7K. Dude, that's a whole lot of mech space. And then you know, drops maybe 1,000, drops maybe 2,000, right? It shouldn't drop more than 2,000 in my case. Super young, super healthy. So, you know, company is really going to be fine with it to the most, for the most part. Um, so, yeah, here's a, here's a, you know, properly designed policy, 1090 split. See, I could have designed a policy putting in 81,000 a year, right? Could have did that. But would that make so much financial sense to me ah eh, maybe not i can i think what really validates me opening up a second policy is if i simply 10x my income going from making 20,000 a month to 200,000 a month if i go from 20,000 a month to 200,000 a month in say the next year or two well then that would say okay damn uh, I can easily max fund this current policy and my second one. Now it's time for me to start another one. Before I start another one on myself, I might consider in sh making sure my mom is good, which I already did. Already set up a policy for her, max funding that. Okay, mom's good. Um, then I look at my siblings and my younger sister and my niece right so my younger sister 10 years old okay i could easily if i 10x i could easily throw a simple policy based on what mom's death benefit is now she's good then i get niece let me make sure girlfriend's good oh already did that right so i'm making sure my kingdom is in line my people trust me right and then i come back to me and put another one on myself right and I keep things going, okay? My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Check the links below in terms of finding out anything about velocity banking, infinite banking, kingdom authority.